Welcome to the Money Hour with host Tina Mitchell. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, is a licensed loan originator with Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, NMLS 134871. The views expressed by the speakers on the following program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited. Now in the studio, local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome to the Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, April 2nd show. You can also listen to my podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch the show on my show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on upcoming events, you can go to tinamitchellevents.com. I am your host and your local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events and how they can impact you in this economy. If you are hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I'm here to answer any questions or, more importantly, to connect you with the guests that I have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyr.com. And now the lineup for today's show, we'll be having a panel conversation with both of my guests, Donald Hoblitzel of Countrywide Health Insurance and Adrian Bird of A Right Place for Seniors. Also, I'll have another conversation with Dawn, Eight Grand Broken Arm. You'll know what that means. And a followed conversation with Adrian, Senior Living Made Simple and Successful. Also, if you are watching my show on our Facebook Live premiere or YouTube channel, you will see us on video. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank my producer over at Hubbard Radio, Benny, and my marketing director, Becky. Hi, Tina. Thank you, Tina. I definitely could not do this show without both of them. So thank you, Benny and Becky, for all the things that you do behind the scenes. Great information and great guests on the show today. For more information on any topic discussed or, again, to connect with my guests, please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And today, I think I'll start out the show, as I do each week, with a little bit of money chat. Money. Tina Mitchell here with your money chat. The Fed's favorite measure of inflation, personal consumption expenditures, shows that the headline inflation rose 0.6% in February, which is in line with expectations. This caused the year-over-year reading to increase from 6% to 6.4%, the hottest level in 40 years. The core rate, which strips out food and energy prices and is a real focus of the Fed, was at 0.4%, which just below estimates. Year over year, the index increased from 5.2% to 5.4%. Private sector wage salaries rose 0.9% last month. And if you were to analyze in the past six annualize in the past six months, private sector wagers are almost up 10.4% annually. Now, this is good news for housing affordability. Yield spread points to bad moon rises. The 10-year versus the two-year treasury spread, which is a reliable recession indicator that I've been following for months. Inverted for a brief moment, this doesn't mean that a recession will happen tomorrow. Oftentimes, it can take months to two years. But if you take a look, you can see how every time in the past that we have seen an inversion, a recession has followed. I expect the inversions to get worse as the Fed continues to hike rates, which will push short-term yields and may help long-term yields come down if the Fed can get inflation under control. Now, while a recession is not great for the economy, periods of recession are always coupled with higher appreciation in real estate as it's one of the only things that you have to hedge against inflation. Now, in housing news, Case-Shiller Home Price Index, which is considered the gold standard of appreciation, showed home prices rose 1.1% in January and 19.2% year-over-year nationwide, which is an acceleration from 18.8% in the previous report. Appreciation remains at very very high levels, even in the face of higher mortgage interest rates, which started to move up in December. The FH 
FA, Federal Housing Finance Agency, released their house price index, which measures home price appreciation on single family homes with conforming loan amounts. While you can have a million dollar home with a higher down payment and stay in conforming loan amounts, it's typically measuring your lower priced homes. Prices rose 1.6% in January and 18.2% year over year, which is an, another increase from 17.6% in the previous report. Now, Zillow is predicting 18% February 2020 to February 2023, and it's supported by comments by Freddie Mac, who is saying that there is a home shortage of 4 million homes. Now, this doesn't mean that builders can go out and build homes because households are being created every day. It's also worth noting that builders have never built more than 2 million homes in a year. So the inventory shortage will most likely be an issue for the foreseeable future. Tina Mitchell, and that is your Money Chat. Coming up next on the Money Hour, panel conversation with Donald Hoblitzel of Countrywide Health Insurance and Adrian Bird of the of Right Place for Seniors right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to the Money Hour at 11.50 a.m. KKNW, the Saturday, April 2nd show. You can also listen to my podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch the show on my show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on upcoming events, you can go to tinamitchellevents.com. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. It is a great day to talk about money, and that is what the show is all about, how to make money, save money so you can have a better quality of life for you and your family. If you are hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I am here to connect you with the guests that I have on the show. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And now we're on our show, panel conversation with Donald Hoblitzel of Countrywide Health Insurance and Adrian Bird of A Right Place for Seniors right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Welcome to both of you. First time on my show. Very, very exciting. Thank you Thank for having you. me. Yeah. Glad to be here. Thank you for having Absolutely. us. Absolutely. So let me share with my listeners a little bit about both of you. So first, uh, Don from Countrywide Health Insurance, married for 33 years to his lovely wife, Carol. Uh, they have a son and a daughter. Both are living uh, on their own. Don mm -hmm. is a lifelong resident of South Jersey. He is a <laughs> private pilot with his uh, instrument rating, Eagle Scout, and a traveling man. And then a little bit about Adrian. Uh, Adrienne is senior living consultant who finds her passion in service and education. She comes from a background mm. in public school education as a school psychologist, yet she has also found joy in acts of service for seniors, mm. desiring to see seniors safe, well taken care of, happy and thriving, and their caregivers relieved of stress led to her and her role as a senior living consultant with a right place for seniors. Adrienne adopts families everywhere that she goes and treats yours as her own. She has built relationships around the world and aspires to spread light and love every step of the way. Oh, that almost brings me to tears, Adrian. Uh, love that introduction. Uh, so excited to have a panel conversation. This is a great way uh, for my listeners to get to know the two of you a little bit better before we get into your individual interviews. Uh, Don, we'll go ahead and start out with you. What life experience brought you into your line of work? Well, really two. I used to be a contractor in another lifetime, and my workers needed health care, and I thought it'd be no big deal. So uh, I started going online to try to find it, and I didn't realize how hard it would be for him. Well, I subsequently um, left that line of work, kind of, sort of, and worked for a big utility company. Well, I broke my, or I tore my Achilles tendon. As soon as I tore my Achilles tendon, my company let me go. So I was looking for another outlet, and this kind of came along the path. And I, I like helping people find the right coverage. 
I love that. With challenges come opportunities. When you create that space to mm -hmm. see what can come out of this challenge, uh, beautiful things are always waiting for you on the other side. Uh, what about you, Adrian? What life experiences brought you into your line of work? Relationships have always been highly valuable to me. And some of my most treasured friendships have been with seniors. So although I've worked in the education field for several years by profession, I've always found myself fostering my relationships with seniors and finding ways to support them. And one of these relationships was with my grandmother who lived with us for some time as she developed dementia before she moved to assisted living. So naturally, when I heard that this free service exists, I was immediately drawn into the work of a senior living consultant. Yeah, and you know, an, uh, another example of uh, challenge and opportunity, when you go through your own personal things and you see where things can improve, it brings you into an area where you can support. And your bio almost brought me to tears because uh, my mother-in-law, she is in um, a care facility and she has dementia and Alzheimer's and, and it's, it's hard. And I know uh, that it's hard to find great people that take extra great care to our seniors because they deserve nothing less than the best for sure. So really excited to, uh, to have you share with my listeners uh, today. Yeah. So Dawn, what is your favorite book that has helped you in your business? Well, I bumped into Darren Hardy a while ago. Oh, and... I love Darren Hardy. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I listen to him every morning. Mm -hmm. And he had this one book out called The Compound Effect. Yes. And I read that and it was, it was, you know, it was like an epiphany. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And I've given that to all my family, every, and my daughter, my, my son, my wife, even she's retired. She's a former school teacher. And uh, it's, that's, that I got down that path and that book really, really, really helped me. Yeah, one of the first books that I, I read when I got into the mortgage industry 27 years ago, uh, before that I'd never read uh, professional growth. Well, I really wasn't a reader. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, my time management business efficiency coach was actually inspired by the starting of the compound effect and making those small changes. And those small changes lead to the big ones. If you try to reach for the big ones, most of the time, they really never come together. So great book. Uh, Adrian, how about for you? I have a long list of books on my reading list, <laughs> ranging from the topics of business strategy to aspects that impact aging to better understand the population that I work with. And so there's so much great content out there that I have yet to find one favorite. One current book, though, that I am reading of interest to me is by a local author here in Washington, and his name is John Medina. And he has a series on brain roles and it covers all different ages and lifespans and situations. And he has one that is for seniors in particular on aging well, and it's highly recommended. So I'm so excited I'm reading it and I look forward to getting through it. Then maybe I'll have a favorite. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. Yeah, my book list is is never ending. You know, there there really is only so much time in the day. Uh, and I don't think I'll get through uh, all of them uh, for sure because there's always new ones that are coming in uh, that are getting inspired and motivated by the ones that are already out there. So Dawn, what is one thing that sets you apart from your competitors? I really try to educate my clients, my prospective clients, of what's out there, how those how these plans really work, what everything is. I, I find a lot of the other agents just say, oh, this is the best plan for you here, take it, you know, this is what you should do. And I try to educate them so they can make an informed decision. So they may not go with the plan, I feel it's good for them, but they go with the plan they like, and therefore I can sleep well at night and they sleep well at night. Oh, that's so great. Uh, I got into the mortgage industry and it took me about 10 years in uh, to realize that what was out there on the market was not good. Uh, I hired a developing team to build Mortgage Triangle Software, which I'm founder and owner of, available mm. for mortgage professionals nationwide. But it came from that as well as there was nothing available for me to easy, easily educate. When you get into numbers, it's a lot. And there wasn't a tool that I could easily educate side by side 
all of the options. Just as you said, Don, I already know what option that they're going to most likely choose. And whether it's the one that I feel is best for them, just like you, yeah. they see the options and they're making an educated decision based on mm -hmm. my expertise and the data that I can show in an easy to understand format. So uh, kindred spirits there for sure. So Adrian, what is one thing that sets you aside from your competitors? I love giving that extra touch of personalization. So essentially I feel like I become part of the extension of the family. And by nature, I'm very detail oriented and thorough in everything I do. <laughs> and so I apply that also in what I do with the families and when I'm working on their behalf as, it, as, as I would for my own. And I'm there for the entire process with the families, helping them find the right fit from start to finish and beyond. Yeah, detail is definitely not something that a high majority of people have in their businesses. So if you have that skill, uh, definitely set you aside from your competitors for sure. Uh, Dawn, what is your why behind what you're doing uh, today as a professional? My why is I want my clients to be able to go to the best doctor, wherever that doctor is located in the country and get the best service. In my case, I tore my Achilles. I saw the best doctor. He was in Pennsylvania. If I'd had a New Jersey plan, I couldn't have gone over there. Yeah. And Adrian, how about for you? What is your why behind what you do as a professional? My why is being able to give back to our seniors of the community through a service that promotes peace of mind. It preserves relationships and it also lifts the burdens. Yeah. And I want to thank, uh, I don't always answer the panel, panel questions very, very few times that I do, but this is one that I do because I want to give a shout out and thank you to me, to you. My why is to wake up every morning and be an inspiration to at least one person. And if I can do that, my day is a success. And so uh, by having you both here today and uh, sharing what you do, your expertise and wealth of information, uh, you got me hooked up for many, many days with all of our listeners. So I appreciate uh, both of you being here and helping uh, for my my why. All right. So coming up next on the money hour, eight grand, eight grand broken arm. What does that mean? Well, we have Donald Hoblitzel of Countrywide Health Insurance right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to the Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, April 2nd show. You can also listen to my podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch my show on my show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on upcoming events, you can go to Tina Mitchell events.com. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. I'm here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one week at a time, one week and one show at a time. If you are hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I'm here to connect you with the guest on the show or answer any questions that you may have. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And now in studio, Donald Hoblitzel of Countrywide Health Insurance, eight grand broken arm, right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Don, welcome so much. Uh, uh, welcome back into the show. And Thank you. how did I do with your last name? You want to pronounce you're, it? You're fine. I, I go by Donnie. I go by Donnie Blitz a lot because a lot of people can't pronounce my last name. So it's not a big deal. You, you did a wonderful job. So oh, Donnie. Good. Well, Johnny Blitz would have been fun. I should have I should have gotten the uh, the behind the scenes there, but glad I glad I got kind of close to it. So oh, you did well. Good. Really excited about my conversation uh, with you. So ACA, Obamacare plans and market plans. What are they and how do they work? Well, they're they're for the general population. Anybody can get them. That's the that's why they're the market plan. They originally were going to be for. You know, they thought everyone would join a market plan and that kind of didn't happen. So that's why the market plans tend to be a lot more money now. I could go in more in depth, but we'll blow the time up. So we'll leave it at that. Okay, perfect. Short and, uh, short and sweet. So underwritten plans, what are those? That would be, uh, you're in the mortgage business. So you, you understand underwriting. This is great because 
our plans are underwritten. We see how healthy the person is. If the person's really healthy, we can get them a better rate. So we're more preferred risk. The market plans are, you know, any whatever. Okay. So it, it's, 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 you know, a lot more affordable and it's really good coverage. Yeah. So if you, you're in good health, you definitely want to go through the underwriting plans. Correct. Yes. Uh, what if you have BC publicly funded BS or exclusive provider EPO? Okay. A lot of people will come back to me and say, oh, I got blue, this great Blue Cross Blue Shield plan. I said, what do you have? Uh, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You got Blue Cross Blue Shield? Well, uh -huh. I got a Chevy. Is that a Corvette or a Cruze? They don't know. EPO is an exclusive provider organization. That's typically around Pittsburgh, places like that. You can only go to who they tell you to go to. You can't go where you need to go if you might want to go there. That's an EPO. Yeah. So it's a reason why it's critically important to work with uh, an expert in any field, uh, including uh, the health insurance space to help you be able to navigate through um, all of these things to truly understand that you're getting the best option to suit what your own personal needs are. So Don, right. what if you have a health maintenance HMO? That's a little bit better. So you got more noodles in the soup, so to speak. Uh, it's not as big of, it's not as big as a PPO, but the HMO, you still have to go to your main provider and have him tell you, oh yeah, you broke your arm. Now you can go to the, the specialist. That's okay. an HMO. They restrict still where you can go. So okay. that's still not the best. That's not, you know, you really don't want that in my opinion. So you said PPO. So uh, you know, let's talk about the preferred provider PPO. Now we're talking. This now is where you, talking. yeah, now you were you talking. See how I worked this, my way up to that? I know you were, you were excellent at that. <laughs> That's where you want to be. And for the simple reason, you know, you're out in Cali, say you need to go to Johns Hopkins. Well, in a PPO plan, you can. If you're in an HMO or EPO, you have no chance. Say you want to go to U of Penn out here, or you want to go to Stanford. Maybe, you're, maybe your doctor doesn't, or maybe your plan doesn't take Stanford. The PPO plan, you can go nationwide. My customers love it because they can go anywhere in the country. Yeah. Okay. So can you talk about deductibles and how they work? There's two ways they work. In the market plans, <clears throat> you're going to have to pay the whole deductible before you get any coverage. Hence the $8,000 broken arm. You break okay. your arm. If you, haven't had, if you haven't paid anything in your deductible. That's lot, what our title, title was. That's right. That plan, you're going to have to pay your whole deductible before you get any coverage. Some deductibles are embedded. So that means you pay part of the deductible, part of the coinsurance, and you don't have to pay the whole deductible up front. Now, that's a lot of teacher plans, fireman plans, uh -huh. police plans. There are some underwritten plans out there that are embedded, too. Okay, so what is uh, explanation of benefits or EOBs? Well, this is where the people that come from the EPO plans, the HMO plans have no clue. And it, it's fine because they don't see them. An explanation of benefits is kind of simple. I'm not being smart. It's just what it says. It's an explanation of the benefits. It's going to say the doctor cost X amount of dollars. The discount was X. This is what you owe. And most PPO plans get a bill from the doctor right away. Mm -hmm. And I tell all my clients, you have to wait for the explanation of benefits. I'll give a great example later. Okay, so let's talk about the percentage of people that are in the hospital for accidents. Yeah, that's that's a real uh, that's huge. It's actually seventy eight percent of the people are in the, in the hospitals for accidents. Really, slip, trip, falls. Yeah, wow. most of my customers obviously, I, inclu obviously includes car accidents. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an accident. Maybe so yeah. yeah, it counts. I've had people slip off their, their steps and break arms and be out for like five days. It's, uh, well, you don't get the weather we do sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it can get a little ugly. And that's what most people are in the hospital for. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll wrap all this up here at the end here. Uh, no doubt. 78%. Uh, wow. That's a high percentage. So then what percentage are in for more serious issues like cancer or heart attacks? Ooh, yeah, that's like 18%. That's so surprising that it's so low. 
Well, yeah, but the, the thing is, what I'm getting back to is a deductible. If, if you have paid on your deductible, so you're in there for an accident, you're paying all your deductible before you get any coverage. And that's the hard part for a lot of people. Yeah, so, wow. So how is a plan with an embedded deductible with group rates and a countrywide acceptance a solution? Well, we kind of take the good from the really big plans, like the police plans, teacher plans. We embed the deductible. We wrap you up, as I call it, in a blanket. You got accident protection. You got med guard, which is like, which is like. Uh, <laughs> well, I, tell everybody, I tell everybody to turn off their cell phones, and then mine was on. Oh, I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to oh get mad. Oh my god! I'll call, Are you kidding? I'll call myself on that. That's the Are first time. I wasn't going to say a word. What are you talking? That's about? First time in like eleven years. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Sorry for the interrupt. It's, no, it's that's fine. Yeah. So what? What our plans are? You know, we like to tell. We like to tell our clients: you're either going to pay two fifty, or you're going to make money. Okay. Uh -huh. Real simple. Two hundred fifty bucks, and that takes care of any accident. Period. Period. Doesn't matter what it is. And then if you do come down with something serious, you're going to make money because we're going to have you wrapped up with a med guard coverage. You're going to put money in your pocket. You pay your deductible. Now, there is a 4% chance you're going to come down with an itis, like appendicitis. You got to pay a little of your deductible. But it's not like the market plans that where you have to pay your whole deductible. Got it. So then I would imagine that's attached to uh, my next question would be, what is, what is the biggest mistake that you see people are making when it comes to their... I see, I see people say, I got a great Blue Cross and Blue Shield plan. Okay, well, what plan do you have? Uh -huh. And then they'll have an EPO and they'll be like, yeah, this is a great EPO. Well, where can you go? Oh, I don't know. Well, what happens if you did, had this happen or that happen? You buy insurance for what if? Yeah. And they don't realize they can't go anywhere. So then, then they wake up and go, uh-oh, well, maybe I need something different. So I tell everybody, whether I sign or not, Get a PPO plan. That way you go where you want to go and need to go if you have to go. Yes. Yeah. So what is the biggest myth out there that you think people have when it comes to? They save money with an HMO. Okay. They think they do, but they really don't. The H because Blue Cross Blue Shield that and all the others, they know that that's where people go. And, you know, that's where they're kind of adding the money in. And the market plans have taken a big hit because a lot of the people that were healthy never joined those market plans. Okay. Yeah. Any big changes that you see coming up uh, in your industry that consumers need to know about? Yeah. The last couple of years, uh, there was a lot of money floating around in the, in for healthcare. That's being pulled back. Uh, 22 and 23. 23 is going to be a rude awakening, I think, for some of the market plan people. Yeah. So what about um, a recent success story that you can share, Don? Oh, well, yeah. It, it, see, my success stories aren't like your success stories. Oh, I'm sure your success stories <laughs> well, are. <laughs> yeah, I, I had, I had well, a Well, young... I, I understand what you're saying, but go ahead. I, I had a young lady. She's 45. And uh, she had one kid and her child was in college and she was the main breadwinner. And I wrote her and she said, I, I don't really want to make it. I don't want to waste my money on that. I said, what's going to happen if, if something happens to you seriously? Yeah. She goes, uh, I don't know. So I wrote her, I, I got her, I got like 35, 40 grand, you know, not a big med guard policy, but a nice one. She called me, what's this, about three, four months ago. I got cancer stage three, wow. but we had her covered. She, she got her money. Uh, she's seeing the best docs and she's going where she needs to go. She put that money in her pocket. She's being able to pay her mortgage and keep going. Her, her child's still in college. And, you know, I bought her a do rag for her hair because she lost her hair. Nice. So yeah, that, that was, that was very, and I didn't like to see her get cancer, but I had her really covered. So yeah, that's, that's why I say my yeah, wins well, are no, really I was just, yeah, definitely your success, your success stories are 100% different. Uh, yeah. help, helping somebody get the keys to their, uh, their first home or their dream home for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what call to action would you have for somebody that's listening to the show today? Well, if they're paying all of their health care themselves, they need to look into other plans that are out there. Yeah. Um, market plans, not mark. Well, market plans, they can. And they can look at underwritten plans and look at everything. Don't just go with the first thing they're told that this is this is the end all be all because yeah. it's not that way. 
Uh, like we, uh, you were sharing in the panel conversation, it really is about options and knowing all mm -hmm. your options. Only through looking at the options can you make an educated decision right. in choosing the best option for you. Right. Um, yeah, and uh, the anything else happening uh, in in your industry or what you're seeing uh, that, oh, I know what I was going to ask you on time-wise because other things, if you're looking at your, your financial plan or maybe you're looking at your mortgage or your state planning, you know, you really re should be reviewing on an annual basis in what's happening in the market as well as what's happening in your own life changes. How often should people be reviewing their health insurance? That's a great question. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going to use that or lead other places. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically, if you change a job, okay, if you start a new business, if you uh, you know get let go from from a business, uh, if you add employees, if you get rid of employees, uh -huh. if you're a sole proprietor and you think you can't get good coverage, if you're a 1099 worker and you think, well, I can't get you know I can only get this coverage. So those things they all play into you know when to check it out. If yeah. you're in a market plan and you move, you automatically have to change your plan just due to just due to the, the rules. If you go from one zip code to another zip code, you have to change your plan. Okay. So that's a great time to look at everything and all your options on the table, too. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, a call to action uh, from your host here, Tina Mitchell, that any changes that happens in your life, there's a lot of. Uh, boxes that you need to check that you mm -hmm. have reviewed what you have in your finances. And that's really what the money hour is about is to get you in front of experts, the best of the best in their industry that can advise you in all these different areas. Uh, so, you know, reach out to, uh, to Dawn or call into the show uh, to get connected. Uh, if you want to take a look at your plan to make sure that you're in the best plan. Dawn, thank you so much for joining me uh, in studio virtually. Really appreciate showcasing what you're doing and appreciate your information. Thank you very much. Coming up next to the Money Hour, Senior Living Made Simple and Successful. Adrian Bird of A Right Place for Seniors right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to The Money Hour on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, April 2nd show. You can also listen to my podcast, my Facebook premiere, or you can catch the show on my show YouTube channel. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. I bring into studio each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything regarding your money. And now in studio, Adrian Bird of A Right Place for Seniors, Senior Living Made Simple and Successful, right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Adrian, very excited uh, to have you in studio as well and showcase uh, what you do and your passion uh, behind helping seniors. So thank you for coming into the show. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. I can't wait to share. Yeah. So let's go ahead and start out with uh, sharing a little bit more about A Right Place for Seniors and the service that you offer. We are a referral agency and we offer senior free senior housing location services to families across several states. We're actually based out of California but we are expanding with senior living consultants across the United States. We're growing rapidly and we're all local to the territories that we serve. So there are senior living consultants in each of the areas that we serve. And we like to make sure that we know our territories and that we are local to that area so that we can be a feet on the ground and there in person for people. We're not just a phone call, we're there in person and we're available to people within the area. We give a personalized service for helping families navigate senior living housing and care with tailored options from start to finish and with continued support as needed. We know that options of our areas that we serve and we help make connections across the senior industry so it makes it a lot easier for the families to get connected to the resources that they need quicker. And so we're a very valuable resource to families in that way. And I'm actually based in the greater Seattle region. I serve the whole Puget Sound area. Wow. And I'm sure there's a lot of families out there that have no idea that you can actually get this type of service and there's not a fee attached to it. 
absolutely. I, I had no idea that this existed myself until hearing about uh, that the service was around. And I was so grateful to know that it is here for families because it's so needed and so many families are overwhelmed in the process. Yeah, it, absolutely. And unfortunately, so many families are extra overwhelmed because they're waiting and not taking care of things. So, uh, Adrian, we talked a little bit about what led you uh, to become a senior living consultant. Uh, can you share a little bit more on that? I have always had a heart for passion and service. And as I said before, I was in the education field. I worked as a school psychologist for 12 years. And when I moved to Washington from California, I decided I was ready to try pursuing a different career, looking for a change and also wanting to explore some other passions that I had. And so having always a soft spot for seniors and wanting to make sure that they're well taken care of, it just naturally drew me in once I heard about uh, that this career actually exists. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, my experience living with my grandmother who had dementia before moving into assisted living herself, as well as just relationships I've had with other dear seniors that are close to my heart. And as they're going through these transitions is giving me a heart for wanting to help others uh, making this process easier and smoother for them and for the caregivers too. I have such a heart for what the caregivers give. And I love to see caregivers feeling relieved of the burden when it's getting too much for them and they're needing the extra support. And so yeah, I I'm- I'm here for that. <laughs> I love that, Adrian, because it's not uh, it's not just the senior, you know, the senior side and the families, uh, but it's also the caregivers that are providing that care for the seniors and families. Um, so it's benefiting uh, both sides, and you get to really bring your passion in to help a lot of people uh, through this can be a stressful process. So, Adrian, what do you find uh, most rewarding about your career? Yes, it is so rewarding in so many ways. I love being able to be continually involved in the events of people's lives as they journey. And that was one thing I enjoyed about education as well with my students is that I could follow their lives throughout time as they matriculated from one level to the next because I worked across all school levels. And so in the same way, I was able to have that same joy in this career as I'm able to work with families as they journey through different uh, steps in their, in their life progression. And I love that I'm able to be a relief to people, to the caregivers. And I love seeing seniors also thriving and enjoying their best lives with their new supports. I see many seniors in their new homes, uh, just having a great time being active, enjoying the activities that are there, as well as having all of that social engagement and opportunity. I just love seeing seniors at their best. And oftentimes that's that is the best situation for many is to be around other people uh, who are also wanting to enjoy life and have activity. Yeah, I would imagine that there uh, would be uh, a percentage that are not thinking that that they would be in a better place and end up finding that not being at home by themselves uh, and getting into a community uh, of other seniors that they can be around. And of course, the support of the caregivers and uh, the doctors as well. So Adrian, what are the benefits to using senior living consultant versus trying to find uh, senior housing on your own? I mean, to me, that kind of seems common sense when why would you not use an expert when you don't have to pay for an expert and try to navigate through this craziness on your own? Uh, what is another you know, benefit of using a service uh, like you? Well, for one, people often are trying to look for ways to cut costs. And so I, I can understand that. But what's really neat about this is it's free and there's no cost whatsoever to the senior family or friend seeking the service. And we save the family time. And I like to think of it as I'm a free real estate agent for senior living. <laughs> Yeah. And so the search is narrowed down for you to viable options. Uh, we tailor it to your desires and your needs of the senior and the family. We try to find what works best for everyone involved. Like say, for instance, a family would love their senior to be close to them in proximity so that they can pick them up to take them out on outings or have them over for dinner whenever they want. Uh, so we, we try to honor those desires and narrow in on those regions that they want 
their person to be close to. Uh, you know, it could be the family's home, it could be a hospital, whatever the case, we, are, we have the tools and the connections that help narrow that search uh, easier than, than would be available to people um, trying to do it on their own. And then we also help to vet the places for people. So we will do the background check for you. We'll look into the community's reports on the state website and we share information with the family on what we find and whether or not the discrepancies are, re are resolved. Wow. And we also um, save money in helping to find places that fit within your budget. There's a lot of different options out there in Washington. I mean, there's tons and tons. And so not knowing where to start can be very, <laughs> very difficult to kind of, you know, you know, just find your way through all the options. So we're able to narrow in on the ones that actually work with your budget, as well as we have insights to the specials that are running and special discounts that are available. We are kept abreast by uh, the communities that we have relationships with, and they let us know when they have specials going. So we keep all of that information on hand. And so it's an advantage of us knowing that, that we can pass that on to families so that when they come to us, we're able to give them that information and set them on a more directed path. Yeah, so you're you're taking the daunting out of it and just as you said, making that a direct path. I, I like how you connected to a real estate agent because really that's, it is, you're, you're doing like an agent would in helping you find a home, but you're helping in finding the home and the transition uh, for the senior housing. So that kind of helps to pull it all together to go, okay, that, that makes sense. So when people think of the idea of senior housing, uh, images are stale and sterile nursing homes might come to mind and people may avoid looking into the options due to this. So what would you tell people to expect when it comes to senior living? Yeah, so unfortunately, senior living has gotten a bad reputation due to that. <laughs> but I, I assure you, the places of today can be quite beautiful and some even luxurious. There's restaurant level dining at many of them. They have a robust schedule of activities. One uh, community I went to, they referred to it as a cruise ship on land. <laughs> And so I would say, allow me to show you some of what the greater Seattle region has to offer and prepare to be amazed. And yeah. many of these apartments also, when I'm there, I, I oftentimes have to remind myself that I am in a place that is for specifically for seniors. Some of them have me wishing I was of age to move in myself. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, I think you have quite the ways to go. Uh, in yeah. <laughs> so what is the uh, difference between a retired com retirement community and a nursing home? Because uh, it's not all the same, right? That's absolutely right. They are not all the same. They're actually quite different, actually. There are different types that represent the levels of care available. And most include activities and some level of meal support. But a retirement community is for the most uh, for the most independent seniors. It's often referred to as an independent living community. And so that's for those seniors who can take care of most of their own needs, but yet they still want to benefit from the socialization that they can get from being at a community. And assisted living is the next step up from there. And that is for those who need assistance with some to most activities of living. So they can go in pretty independent, but it has the ability to, to offer the care for them as they end up needing more care over time, uh, such as dressing to all meals provided. Uh, they, they might have an a la carte menu or they might have care packages that they offer. Um, both independent living and, and assisted living can offer individual apartments with their own kitchens or even little kitchenettes as well. Now, memory care would be the higher end of, of assisted living. And that's care that is specialized for those with dementia or Alzheimer's. And, and so um, those types of communities are for those that may be at the mild, um, the mild stage in dementia, or they could be in the very uh, severe progressed stage in dementia. And so, um, but with that, those places are very specialized in the activities that they do, that it's all geared towards um, helping to sustain a cognitive functioning and all of that for those with, with memory issues. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's actually really beneficial to those who go in. Sometimes they come in and they may not seem like they're functioning as high, but then as they're in the, 
memory care, sometimes they increase their functionality because of the activities that are available. Yeah, absolutely. And then skilled nursing, skilled nursing facilities, that's what you would say are the nursing homes. And that's the highest level of care. And that's for people who require like the 24 hour uh, cares or the acute care. And so that's completely different from the retirement to the senior, um, you know, skilled nursing facilities. There's a wide range there. And then you have the more intimate settings, which are the adult family homes. And those are residential care homes and they have assisted living care. And most of those are typically licensed for about six residents, but they can offer also a wide range of services. It just depends on the home as well as the staff available and uh, they can tailor that to the person. And it's very, it's very much more an intimate setting because you're with just a few other people living in the same home. Yeah, so, and, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, no. And I was just gonna say lastly that uh, some communities may have all levels offered at one site. So you could have, you could be at an independent living community that also has assisted living available and memory care as well as hospice. And so you can age in place as they say, in one place, if, if that was your desire. It's not a one size fits all really model for all of these. It just depends on what you're looking for and what level of care you really need. Uh, another great reason, again, in having an expert that can navigate you through all the options and not just in the options that you have today, but what is it going to look like uh, 10 years and you know, maybe 20 years, however long down the road in that transition. Um, and as you said, uh, Adrian, really walking them and helping them through that journey because it is, and you want to be able to live your best life ever as uh, in your in your senior life again, because uh, you deserve nothing less than that. So what is the benefit, uh, very social, uh, independent senior to move into an independent living community? One of the biggest benefits, I would say, is simplifying life to where you're no, you're no longer having to worry about your various bills that you have coming in or taking care of managing a home where there could be a variety of maintenance issues that can arise at any time and you have the option for structured activities so you're able to get up and choose what will I do today among the activities that they have planned for the day you also can find purpose in helping to lead or help plan a lot of a lot of the um, communities that have independent living will offer the, the ability to the residents, you know, to be able to structure the activities around what you are interested in. It doesn't have to be being go. It doesn't have to be that they want to sit and watch movies. They could try different activities that are of their interest. And they often also have really amazing amenities on site. I've seen some that had billiards rooms and they'll have movie theaters, pools, some even indoor saltwater pools. I mean, they have a lot of different amenities, exercise gym, hair salons, all at your fingertips without having to drive or leave your home to go and get those options. Mm -hmm. So a lot of options can be can make independent living really attractive. And another one that I find is major and also a bit of comfort to families is the safety aspect. Uh, mm -hmm. Safety is, is I think, a, a very large factor to, to consider. And when you're in an independent living, you know that you have someone you can call if you need help. Uh, they also oftentimes have like pull cords in the rooms with alert systems in the rooms to notify staff if you need help or that you're just still kicking, that you're still fine. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> they offer all of that. And um, as I said before, you can do the aging in place at some of the independent living. So some of them have a, a license that allows you to stay within the same place as you continue to need assisted living. And so, um, and then you can also bring in care at a lot of them. So if you don't want to opt to uh, have whatever care they might have there available, you can also hire in your own in-home care to come as you need the extra assistance as well. Yeah. So let's get into a commonly asked question, which is the cost, because, um, you know, a lot of people, I imagine it's are looking at this as very expensive. What is the range that families should expect to see here in Washington? And is there any way to help with those costs? Yes. So the average for Washington is around $5,000 for $5,000 a month for assisted living. And that also can vary depending on the cost of, of care because cost, the cost of care can add on to that. So the cost overall may vary significantly depending on the location, 
of the community as well as the amenities and the level of care. So I would say the first helpful step is to look at all the expenses that you currently have, looking at your food, utilities, rent, mortgage, cable bill, maybe even internet, and see what you're already paying in your uh -huh. own home. And then if you own a home, also look at your options for um, as far as like if you're looking to sell your home, uh, you can talk with a senior real estate specialist uh, to find out what your options are or a mortgage broker. And you can decide what monies you may have available to you to help. It's a, the whole idea is pooling all your resources together that you have. So your pensions, your retirement accounts, long-term care insurance. And by the way, long-term care insurance, oftentimes they can help supplement the cost in a community. And so pooling all that together to say what you can afford, what would be your budget. And then some communities offer the ability to use Medicaid to help supplement. So some people may find that they're eligible for for Medicaid. And so that might be an option too. Uh, some of them require that you go in and start off on private pay, and then you, you end up uh, eventually getting to the point if you pay over a certain amount of time, you can go into Medicaid at that point, where all the costs are covered through Medicaid. And so, uh, so there are a lot of different ways of looking at how you can make it affordable. Um, but also there are special discounts that they run and for like veterans, as well as certain employer groups, all of that's worth looking into. Yeah. And although assisted living can be costly, you know, there are ways to make it more affordable. Yeah, great. Uh, what if a family or a spouse would rather keep their loved one at home, but caregiving for them to do it on their own is too difficult? Yes, I see that. I see that often. That's also the case. So there's in-home care and home health. There are great options for families who want to keep their loved one at home. So with in-home care, you can have a caregiver come in to help with a wide range of supports from bathing to transferring from one surface to the other. So such as like from a chair to a bed, uh, to running errands, to preparing meals as well. And I have seen that service be such a huge, uh, lift a such a huge burden for the caregiver yeah. uh, to have someone come in and to help uh, take some of those tasks off their plate. Home health is also a benefit to families to where they can get the medical services that they need in the home instead of having to take their loved one and transport them to go get services. So such as having a nurse come in, a speech pathologist and a physical therapist, which of course you need a doctor's order for those things. But these services can be such a blessing and a great help to families that are needing this extra support. Yeah. So uh, perfect timing. We've got one minute to wrap up the show. I want to ask one last question. If families are unsure to on where to start or uh, not yet ready to make a decision on which route that they want to take, um, would it be beneficial for them to start this education process and connect with you right now? Oh, absolutely. They can simply give me a call or an email. I would be more than happy to offer some ideas for next steps that they can take and some resources. And they can also... Um, that they can access. And if they desire to have me walk that journey with them of finding the right fit for their for their loved one, I'd be also be very happy to do that and no cost to them. And it's super satisfying for me to give back. So yeah. I'm, I'm very eager to help people through this. And I want people to know that they don't have to do this alone. There, there is help out there. Well, thank you, Adrian. Uh, for people that are watching you on video, you can definitely see your passion uh, oozing out uh, and sharing what you do. And uh, just really appreciate you being here and everything that you're doing to help our seniors. Uh, call to action. If you're listening to the show right now, when to take action right now, prepare. Preparation is the key to everything. Get the information that you need uh, so that you can take care of your loved ones. Uh, you can prepare for yourself as you're getting into that journey. And uh, that's why I brought Adrian in. So please call the show at one 855 411.50. Again, that's 1-855-411.50 or online at themoneyr.com. And I can get you connected with either of my guests here on the show. Uh, Tina Mitchell, your host and your local mortgage expert signing off for the day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I look forward to chatting with you more next week. Everything regarding your money right here on 1150 AM KKNW. 